نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه كل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار we have all seen the riots that have spread across this country we have all seen the hatred directed towards islam and to the muslims we have seen the masajid vandalized We have seen Muslims spit upon and abused. We have seen asylum seekers, many of them from Muslim countries, being attacked. And even some of the graves of the Muslims have been desecrated and defiled in the Muslim cemeteries. <coughs> we ask ourselves, how should we respond? What should we do? What is the right thing to do? But these questions like all others a muslim looks to the quran and the sunnah by the light of their guidance a muslim lives his or her life when we look to the quran and the sunnah the first thing that we see is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised to test us in this life that allah has promised that we will be tested that our faith will be tested in this life as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says alif lam mim ahasiba an-nas an yutraku an yaqulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun Allah says alif lam mim do people think that they will just say amanna we believe we are muslims and then they will be left alone and they won't be tested and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says wa laqad fatanna alladhina min qablihim and verily we tested the people before them we tested the righteous before them فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا And verily Allah will come to know who are those who are truthful when they say we believe. وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ And He will know who are those who are liars, who are just empty talk when they claim to be Muslims. And likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made clear that specifically when it comes to the disbelievers and their persecution of the Muslims, and they're attacking the muslims and they're fighting the muslims that this is done with the permission of allah and as part as part of the plan of allah as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says liyamiz allah al khabith min al tayyib that allah says so that he can sort out the impure from the pure to sort out who are the gems amongst the people who are the diamonds the rubies the precious ones amongst his creation and who are the filth and the impure ibn kathir rahimahullah he said talking about this verse fama'na al-ayati inna ma abtalaynakum bil kuffari yuqatilunakum liyatamayyiz al-khabith min at-tayyib that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is saying but that we only test you with these disbelievers fighting against you throwing rocks at you so that he separates and filters the pure from the impure secondly how should we respond what is a muslim how is a muslim meant to respond to these attacks the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave us the answer once a man came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said ya rasulullah awsini 
Ya Rasulullah, give me advice. Give me a wasiyah. So the Prophet ﷺ, he gave him two words. La taqdab. Don't get angry. Haradda damirara. So again the man said, give me more advice. Give me more advice. And every time he asked, the Prophet ﷺ said the same two words. La taqdab. La taqdab. Don't get angry. The scholars, they said, the reason that the Prophet ﷺ kept repeating this was to teach the man and to teach us. This is enough as advice. You don't need any more advice more than this. If we were all not get angry, meaning do not act when you are angry, this would suffice as a wasiyah for us. <clears throat> and likewise, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, لَيْسَ الشَّدِيدُ بِسُرْعَةِ إِنَّمَا الشَّدِيدُ الَّذِي يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَهُ عِنْدَ الْغَضَبِ the Prophet ﷺ, he said, the strong one is not the one who overcomes the people with his physical strength. It's not the way that you people think. That the strong one is the one who makes the people afraid because he's big, because he's strong. But the real strength, the real strong one is the one who controls himself, restrains himself when he has the anger inside of him. Some may say, but how can we be expected to not get angry if we saw that the grave of my father was desecrated, someone threw paint on it. If the grave of my mother was defamed, how could I not get angry? Yes, brother, we would all get angry. But the Prophet ﷺ taught us that the real strength is that when we feel this anger, we restrain our tongues, and more importantly, we restrain our hands. We don't act when angry. This is why when the man came to Salman al-Farsi, radiallahu anhu, who was one of the scholars amongst the Sahaba, and he said, Ya, ya Abu Abdullah, O oh, Abu Abdullah, give me advice, the same statement. So, the, so Salman, he said, La taqdab, he repeated the same advice that the Prophet sallallahu had taught. So the man said, you tell me to do something which I cannot control. Anger is a human emotion. How can I control what, what emotions I feel? This is natural that sometimes I lose my temper, that I get angry. So, so Salman, he said, فَإِنْ غِذِبْتَ So if you get angry, فَأَمْلَكْ لِسَانَكَ وَيَلِكْ Then restrain your tongue and restrain your hand. And not only this, but the Prophet ﷺ taught us specifically, not getting angry is a general rule. We should not allow ourselves to act when we are angry. But more specifically, when a Muslim is abused, when a Muslim is reviled, that is the time to have even more patience and not to act when angry. And this was the example that the Prophet ﷺ himself gave us. As Aisha radiallahu anha said, when she described the Prophet ﷺ, وَمَنْ تَقْمَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لِنَفْسِهِ فِي شَيْءٍ قَطْ That the Prophet ﷺ, the Messenger of Allah, he never avenged himself in anything regarding himself in any personal matter, ever. The Prophet ﷺ, who was more abused, more reviled, there is no Muslim in history who has suffered more abuse in the past and even in the present than our Prophet ﷺ. No one has been lied about even more than him. No one has abused and been insulted more than him. And yet never, not once, did he ever avenge himself due to his own personal honor. She said, مَنْ تَقَبَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ سَلَمْ لِنَفْسِهِ فِي شَيْءٍ قَطْ إِلَّا أَنْ تُنْتَهَكَ حُرْمَةُ اللَّهِ فَيَنْتَقِبْ Only if he saw that the rules of Allah, the law of Allah was violated, then the Prophet ﷺ would avenge for the sake of Allah, not for his own sake. Once, the Prophet ﷺ, he was sitting with Abu Bakr, and a man came, and he sat with them and he started to insult Abu Bakr, abuse Abu Bakr. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he stayed quiet. He did not respond, he did not say anything. So then the man a second time started to abuse and curse Abu Bakr. And again Abu Bakr, he stayed quiet and did not say anything. And then for a third time the man started to abuse and insult Abu Bakr. Finally Abu Bakr, he started to respond back. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he is of course the one that we know. He would never go to excess yet. He would never do something sinful. So he only responded back. And he only pushed back against the abuse. He did not insult the man back or say something that was haram. 
But nevertheless, he started to argue with the man. So the Prophet وسلم, he stood up and he left. So as soon as Abu Bakr saw that the Prophet وسلم, has left, immediately he got up and he chased the Prophet وسلم, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, are you upset with me? Did I do something wrong? So the Prophet وسلم, he said, نَزَلَ مَلَكٌ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ يُكَذِّبُهُ بِمَا قَالَ لَكَ He said an angel descended from the heavens and he was belying what this man was saying to you. While you stayed quiet, Allah sent an angel to defend your honor, to argue on your behalf. You didn't see it, but Allah was sending the angel to, this, to, do, to defend you. فَلَمَّنْ تَرْصَوْتْ إِنْ تَصَرْتَ وَقَعَ الشَّيْطَانِ but then when you started to defend yourself, avenge your honor, then the angel, he left and shaitan came. Shaitan came and said, oh, what's this? What's going on here? So the Prophet وسلم, he said, فَلَمْ أَكُمْ لِأَجْلِيسَ إِذْ وَقَعَ الشَّيْطَانِ So the Prophet وسلم, he said, and I was not going to sit in a place where shaitan is also sitting. He and I, we don't stay in the same place. As soon as shaitan came, I left. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he didn't do anything haram. It was his right to defend his honor. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the believers. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَهُمُ الْبَغْيُ هُمْ يَنْتَصِرُونَ And the believers are those who when injustice is done to them. They avenge themselves. هُمْ يَنْتَصِرُونَ They respond back. They push back. And then Allah says, وَجَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٍ سَيِّئَةٌ مِثْلُهَا And the response, the reward of an evil deed is evil done back. And if someone does evil to you, the response is evil done back to them. Equivalent, not more. So Abu Bakr, he had the right to respond. He had the right to defend himself. The Prophet is teaching Abu Bakr, teaching us, there is another option. There is another way, a better way, a higher road that we are meant to take. And that is to endure the abuse, not to respond back to the abuse. To forgive and to pardon and to overlook rather than retaliate. And this is the same thing that Allah Himself says, because in those same verses where Allah says, they are the ones who retaliate when injustice is done. Only after a few more verses, Allah says, وَلَمَنْ صَبَرَ وَغَفَرَ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ لَمِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ But as for the one who endures the abuse, who is patient, وَغَفَرَ And he forgives, he overlooks, this is the resolve to aspire to. And likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَإِنْ أُقِبَتُمْ فَعَاقِبُ بِمِثْلِ مَا أُقِبَتُمْ بِهِ And if you retaliate, then you retaliate equivalent to what to the suffering that you have suffered. وَلَئِنْ صَبَرْتُمْ لَهُوَ خَيْرُ لِلصَّابِرِينَ But if you endure, if you don't retaliate, this is better for those who endure. Some may say, no, but this is the time to show strength. When these racists, these bigots, they think the Muslims are weak. They think they can do whatever they like to us. This is the time to show strength. This is the time to retaliate. This is not the time to show weakness. Brothers, it's not weakness to forego retaliation. It's not weakness to leave our vengeance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to avenge ourselves. Rather, it is strength. It shows the strength of what is in our hearts. That we do not respond, do not retaliate. And instead we show the quality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says again and again when He describes the believers. We show sabr, we show endurance, we show patience. Once, on one of the expeditions, <laughs> The Prophet and the Sahaba, they had gone for jihad. And they were traveling through the desert. And they stopped at a camping, at a campsite, at a place to rest. And it was the middle of the day when the sun is at its hottest. So the Prophet and the Sahaba, they split up, all looking for trees, for any shade, to protect them from the heat of the sun. And so they went in different directions. And the Prophet himself, he also found a tree. And he hung up his sword on one of the branches of the tree. And then he stayed in the shade until he fell asleep and he took a nap. But while he was taking a nap, a disbeliever came and came secretly and took his sword from the scabbard 
and he stood above the Prophet ﷺ, pointing the sword at the head of the Prophet ﷺ. So the Prophet ﷺ woke up, and the man he said, Takhafuni, are you afraid of me? The Prophet ﷺ, without any hesitation, he said no. So then the man he pointed his sword at the Prophet ﷺ, and he said, مني, Who will protect you from me? Who will protect you from me? So the Prophet ﷺ, without any doubt, without any hesitation, with full confidence, he said, Allah, who will protect you from me? Allah. So the man, when he heard how much confidence was in the voice of the Prophet ﷺ, when he saw that the Prophet ﷺ had no doubt, no fear, his hand started to shake until the sword fell from his hand. So the Prophet ﷺ picked up the sword and he stood up and he pointed the sword at the man and he said, minni, Who will protect you from me? So the man he got on his knees and he said, Kun khayra akhir, Be merciful, have pity on me. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Tashhadu an la ilaha illallah, would you testify that no one is worthy of worship except Allah? The man said, no. And I'm not ready to become Muslim. But he said, but I promise you, I will never fight against you, and I will never be with the people who fight against you. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, then go. Oh, you are free. So the man, he left. Some may say, well then what should we say to these racists and these bigots? Even if we show patience, we must say something, we must give a statement. What should we say? The Prophet ﷺ has also taught us what to say. He's already given us that statement. He's already, already given us the reply to all those who show hatred towards Islam. In the third year after the Hijrah, in the great battle of Uhud, when the Muslims suffered such a terrible defeat, when so many of the Sahaba, so many of the great companions lay on the battlefield with their noses cut off, their ears cut off, mutilated. And even the Prophet ﷺ was wounded in this battle and the blood was on his face. And the, and the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba, they had to retreat up the mountain of Tuhud, make a strategic retreat. So Abu Sufyan, who was not a Muslim at this time, the leader of Quraysh, he came riding to the bottom of the mountain. And he knew the Muslims were up above at the peak. So he called out and he said, Afiqo Muhammad, is Muhammad amongst you? So the Prophet said, he told the Sahaba, La tujibu, don't answer, don't respond. And then Abu Sufyan he said, Afiqo ibn Abi Fahada, is Abu Bakr amongst you? And again the Prophet said, don't respond. And then he said, is Umar amongst you? And again the Prophet said, don't respond. So then Abu Sufyan he said, as for those three, we have relieved you of them. Yani khas, we took care of them for you, we have killed them. So Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh, who was also there, he couldn't control himself, he couldn't take it anymore, that this disbeliever is boasting. So he said, no, you enemy of Allah, you have lied. Those three that you have mentioned are all safe and sound. Allah has kept alive what you hate. And then Abu Sufyan, he said, this day for the day of Badr. You defeated us at Badr, and we have now defeated you here at Uhud. Wal harbu sijal. And war is by turns. Some days you win, some days you lose. So Umar, he said, no, by Allah, they are not equal. For your dead are in the hellfire, and our dead are in Jannah. And then Abu Sufyan, he said, as for the mutilation of your dead, this is something that I did not command. I did not order my troops to do this. But it doesn't sadden me either. And then he said, Hubal, may it be exalted. Hubal was one of the idols of Mecca. He said, Hubal, may it be exalted. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ala tujibu, will you not respond? One minute the Prophet ﷺ was telling the Sahaba, don't respond. And the next minute he's telling them to respond. Why the difference? Because once again, when our enemies discuss us, if they want to attack us as individuals, when they talk about our personal honor, then a Muslim does not respond. He turns away. He does not give a response. But when they talk about our religion, when they talk about Islam, when they talk about Allah, then a Muslim cannot stay quiet. 
So he said, Ala Tuji, well, when you not respond, they said, what should we say? He said, say, Allahu A'la wa ajal. Say, Allah is higher and more glorious. And then Abu Sufyan, he said, Lana wa la uzza lakum. He said, he said, we have al uzza, another one of their idols. We have al uzza on our side, and there is no uzza for you. We have Hawal, we have Manat, we have all these gods. We have so many gods on our side. And you people, you only have one. We have hundreds of gods on our side, and you Muslims, you just have one. So the Prophet وسلم, he said, will you not respond? The Sahaba said, what should we say? He said, say, Allahu Mawlana wa la Mawla lakum. Say, Allah is our protector. And there is no protector for you. <laughs> what do we say to these writers, these racists, these bigots who have hatred in their hearts towards Islam today? But tomorrow they may embrace Islam. We say the same thing that the Muslims said to Abu Sufyan, who had hatred in his heart towards Islam that day. But only a few years later, he became Muslim. We say to them, Allah is our protector. And there is no protector for you. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه المعين ما بعد القرآن and the Sunnah teaches to show restraint teaches to have sabr but there have been unfortunately some amongst the Muslims especially those who are young and foolish who have done the complete opposite of this who have violated the teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah they have gone out like a mindless mob, thinking that they will intimidate the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they show only that Muslims, we can behave as ignorantly as those against us. Amr ibn Qulthum, one of the poets of Jahiliyyah, when he described his tribe, Bani Taghrib, in his poem, his Mu'allaqa, that was hung up on the Kaaba, and he was describing the Arabs of Jahiliyyah. But it was as if he was describing the Muslims, these Muslims today. He said, He said, let no one act ignorantly against us. Let no one act ignorantly against us, transgress against us, or we will act even more ignorantly against them. Let no one act thuggish against us, because we will go beyond bounds in how we will act thuggish against you. This is Jahiliyyah. It's not what Islam teaches us. That if someone does evil to us, we will do ten times the evil back to them. This is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us. In Birmingham, <coughs> these ignorant people, they went and started vandalizing a pub. They started smashing the windows of a pub. This is completely haram. This is haram. This is not allowed. This is private property. You are not allowed to go and destroy private property. It doesn't matter what the person has done. And in fact, the public or the people in the pub, they have nothing to do with the riots. But even if they did, even if all the neo-Nazis who are using this pub to get drunk, it is not allowed to go and harm anyone in this pub or to uh, vandalize the pub. In Islam, it is not allowed to be vigilantes. It is not allowed to take the law into your own hands. This is a violation of the Sharia. Before it is a violation of English common law. But these people, they think that if we show that we can also be violent, if we show that we can also intimidate, we can do the same, we can bring the same clubs and weapons, that the people against us will be afraid. But this is not what our religion teaches us. In those early days in Mecca, when the Muslims were persecuted, far more than anything we have had to suffer. They went through far more than anything we have had to gone through this week. And the Muslims were being abused and tortured physically. And they took Bilal, as we all know, and they laid him on the hot ground of Mecca. And then they took the heavy rocks and put it on his chest to crush him. And Umayyah bin Khalaf, his owner, was saying, who are your gods? Who are your gods? You will pray to whoever I tell you to pray to. 
Bilal, he kept saying, Ahad, Ahad, one, one. There's only one worthy of worship. And later on, they asked him, why did you keep saying, Ahad, Ahad, Ya Bilal? You could have said anything. You could have said Allah. You could have said La ilaha illallah. You could have said anything. Why did you keep saying one, 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 one? So Bilal, he said, because I knew that it was the word that made Umayyah the angriest. Bilal was showing us what real strength is. Not to perpetrate violence, but to endure violence. He was showing us that strength is not how hard you hit someone else, but how hard you can get hit and still stay firm for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of these ignorant people, they think that this is jihad. They think as if they are on the, at the battle of Badr. This is not jihad. These are criminals. And the criminals are meant to be dealt with by the police. Just because you're Muslim and they're not Muslim doesn't make this some kind of jihad. But they are right in one thing. This is war. But not the kind of war that they imagine. This is not a war of weapons. This is a war of perception, of image. This is a battle for the hearts and the minds of these people, the people of this country. The perception, as we all know, is that Muslims, we are terrorists. We are violent. And you cannot change this perception by chasing people, saying, Allahu Akbar, terrorizing people, even if those people that you are chasing are racist. You cannot tell people, you cannot change the perception that we are terrorists if you seek to do evil to people who are also evil. You only reinforce this perception. You only keep enforcing the wrong perception, this misperception of Islam. Once, after the battle of Uhud, a leader from amongst the disbelievers, a man named Amr ibn al he came to the Prophet in Medina. And he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, why don't you send some of your companions to al Najd, yani to Central Arabia. Come and send them there, and they can call the people to Islam there. So the Prophet وسلم, he said, I worry about their safety. Because that area, there is no peace treaty. Anything that happened to the Muslims there. And this is Arabia. Yani back then, it was the jungle. Yani there is no law. So he said, I worry about their safety. So Amr al-Qutayl, he said, I will guarantee their safety. I will be their guarantor. I will protect them. So the Prophet وسلم, he chose 70 of his companions. And these were some among, among some of the best of the Sahaba. Even the Sahaba themselves used to call this group al Quran, the reciters, because these people, they would spend their nights worshipping Allah and reciting the Quran. So he sent a group of them, a group of 70 of them, to this man. But this man, he betrayed the Muslims. He betrayed the Prophet And so he made a plot with his companions, with his compatriots, that when the Muslims come, he will slaughter them all. So one of the men who went, one of the Muslims who went, his name was Haram ibn Milhan. Haram ibn Milhan, radiallahu anhu, he went into the tent of the chief of this tribe. And he said, yani, the equivalent of, he was waving the white flag, saying, I come in peace, I come here, I carry the banner of safety, and I only come to give you the letter, the message of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa So the chief said, enter. But he had already made a plot with his people. So Haram ibn Milhan, he started to read the letter of the Prophet and he was calling the people to Islam. So the chief of the tribe, he had his assassin go behind Haram with a spear where he couldn't see. And he stabbed Haram ibn Milhan from the back until the spear came out from his chest. Yet he impaled him on the spear. So Haram ibn Milhan, radiallahu he looked down at the spear sticking out of his chest. And you know what he said? You know what he said? Without any cry of pain, without any delay, he looked down at the spear and he said, Allahu Akbar. Fustu, warab al Kaaba. He said, Allahu Akbar. I won. I succeeded. I'm a shaheed. I'm going to Jannah. Warab al Kaaba. I swear by the Lord of the Kaaba. And then he died. And then later on, that chief, he killed all the other Muslims as well. But that assassin, the man who stabbed him, his name was Jabbar ibn Salma. Jabbar ibn Salma, he said, when I stabbed him and he said these words, I couldn't understand. What do you mean you succeeded? What do you mean you won? 
I stabbed you. And you're saying, I won by the Lord of the Kaaba? And he said, that image wouldn't leave my mind until finally I realized whatever faith this man has, whatever belief is in his heart, it must be the truth. And he embraced Islam. And now it's our turn. Now the question is, what image will we leave in the minds of the people around us? Will it be the image of a mindless mob? Or will it be the image of a people who when the masjid is attacked, they come even more frequently to the masjid? Will it be the image of a people who the more they are abused, the more resilient they are, the more steadfast they are? Will it be the image of a people who when they are attacked, their belief in Allah, their faith in Allah gets only stronger until the point that the people around us all the people of this country say, whatever faith these Muslims have, whatever belief is in their hearts, it must be the truth. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect the Muslims in this country and all around the world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect the masajid, to protect the maqabah, the graves of the Muslims. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to be from those who live by the Quran and the Sunnah in easy times and in difficult times as well. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين ودمر أعداء الدين وانصر عبادك الموحدين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار آمين و